Hello there. Good afternoon. From one commuter to another. Hello, Thomas, Ralph. What's up, Chris? Ish? Nova? Yes, hello. Hello to my dear commuters. My family. Kapong, thanks for the 16 months with Prime. Fish. Appreciate 39 months in a row. Fish on fish. Thanks a lot, Benjamin, as well. Resident lurker, but always supporting the cause and the techno. Hello. Venus, the nerd. Explosion. Kaibi. Hey, Paolo. Good afternoon, Edwick. Didn't do the uh, early TT today, but I will be competing in the late one, and we'll still have our viewer tournament today as well. Afterwards. I thought we'd start off with uh, with our speed run. Yeah, the commuter life is getting to me, I tell you. I don't know if I could handle it. Chris, tier three, seventy-seven months. Thank you, Chirera. The tier three, such a long time. We've witnessed so much happen in Chris's life. Figured it all out in front of us. Oh, Chris. I visited South Africa before. I have. Hello, Real T. I hear, uh, or I see rather, that you're here on International Tim Owes Another Factor Day. A joyous day for us all. Back when I had the beard, I know. <laughs> today I, I shaved this morning. I'm extra clean shaven today. No, it wasn't in. Um, I don't think I was in Cape Town. I was in uh, Joburg briefly, but mainly in Durban. Can I play the London system? Abdullah Rajput. Um, no, not in this speed run. But I've got an entire YouTube series where I only play the London system. I think it's pretty instructive. So if you're interested in just that opening, that's the series for you, man. And I'll probably play the London in Title Tuesday or something later today. But for this specific speed run, I won't be. Well, stay tuned for Title Tuesday, uh, Mr. Rajput. I'll be streaming it on Kick a little bit later today. I guess it starts in three hours. I usually play a London or two in, uh, in TT. Load to GP. Afternoon, Ra. Shall I say good morning to a West Coaster like yourself? No pre-move speedrun sounds like one of those like hickey speedruns where people are like, wow, he's doing a speedrun with odds. And it's not that much odds. 
It's not enough of a concept for me. I remember Hickey did a Bong Cloud speedrun, and then... Or he did a Queen Odds speedrun, and it slowly was like... It went from, like, entire Queen Odds... To, like, Queen for Pawn, to, like, Queen for a good Pawn, to, like, Queen for a piece, to, like, Queen for a good piece, to, like, Queen for a Rook. <laughs> it's like, okay! <laughs> kind of kind of losing the uh, luster there. I don't know if no speedrun, or, uh, no... No speed run, pre moves only. Um, I don't know if no pre moves is enough of a concept. Well, if it was a 10 second speed run, realty, then sure. I don't think anyone's struggling to beat Gory otherwise. Cesaris 99, what speedrun is today? This is a speedrun where every opening you're going to see should be pretty new to you. I mean, at the end of the day, somebody can just play like G6. I won't really have a brand new opening against it, but for the most part, all the main openings will be pretty new, pretty fresh. Or if you've seen them before, you've only seen them really on this channel. So that's the theme for this speedrun. Hello to Infighter Gory. Good afternoon, Mrs. Chicken Wing. It's great, GP. Just takes a while, like, you know, as a as a recent commuter, uh, you know, it's it's difficult. Not many hours in the day to get things unpacked, you know, uh Wake up, commute to work, a dreary commute. Entire day of work, commute back, exhausted. Eat up a factor meal and, you know, ready to call it a night. My factor meals did arrive, by the way. So we'll probably be doing a, a factor stream this week. Pretty soon. Maybe I'll do it on Thursday. That's what I'm planning at the moment. The factor is in the house. In the building. We got lots of factor meals for the hungry bellies here. Spenny, uh, unfortunately, not even the most secure man in his masculinity and survive a Toronto bike commute and keep it intact. So, gonna have to respectfully decline. Big two years from Simster. Thanks for the 24 months, buddy. Welcome back, Simster. When are we getting a disrespect speed run? <laughs> now it's a disrespect speed run. <laughs> I just have to play chess now. <laughs> Algerian. No way you think this is the Algerian flag. Or perhaps the comments unrelated. Could be. Tim, uh, you know, if I didn't know better, it almost sounds like you're trying to slow down uh, the systematic progress. That's right, goal 11. Yeah, no, the, the glasses look better on Jeff, man. Or Aryan. We need tournament winner Aryan to come and model the Holtzker and glasses. Always happy to be here. Ah, cheers, Simster. 
We've got a couple hours ahead of us before Title Tuesday. We'll still be hosting our viewer tournament this evening. Yeah, well played to Aryan. I was very happy to see things finish the way they did. Our first goal is 1500 in this uh, in this series. His final score was five and a half out of six. Yep, disrespect speedrun, bro. I'm surprised you guys are asking what the speedrun is called. I have glasses on, so it's called the disrespect speedrun. It's where I play normal chess, but with sunglasses. And call it a speed run. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, a little a little opponent BN. Actually, I'm only doing this because the sunglasses are on. It's hard to wear the sunglasses and not, like, bob your head like hickey, you know? I feel like when the sunglasses go on, it just, it starts happening. Latin and blonde. Wear your sunglasses at night. Well, I wouldn't blame you, man. The whole screwing ones are hard to take off. All right, what is it? 2 p.m.? At least 2 p.m. Eastern here. Title Tuesdays at 5. We got a couple hours in front of us. Then I'll play the late TT. And then host our viewer tournament afterwards to complete our Tuesday session. It's going to be a lot of uh, stream hours this week. I think the guys get back later this week, like Thursday, Friday. So maybe we'll get another uh, Aryan appearance Thursday night, Friday night. Because he'll be coming back here before his next trip. So we'll have to enjoy our last Aryan days. All right, we're over 1,400, just crested last time. Let's go for 1,500 with our openings and in three-minute chess. We're playing all our openings. Okay, probably want to start with the Knights. Kind of hard to get the, the plunge in there properly, but I can do this. It's actually a pretty safe move, surprisingly. Oh, bishop back to d7. Okay. Queen takes knight there, doesn't do that much. So, knight d5, doesn't look that special. We should take. We 
could take here and then take with the pawn. But I think it does make more sense to just take that. I'll be playing c3 just to blunt that diagonal. Got to keep our bishop. No way I want to hand the bishop over to my opponent. So I'll go back to b3. This pawn doesn't need support at the moment. Okay, he wants to bring his bishop back. Queen f3, bishop back. I have some pressure on f7, but... Nothing like, <laughs> nothing to be too proud of. Probably here and queen d2 are the two moves I'm really thinking about. Go for this one. Oh, interesting. He goes back with knight c6. I think it is time to at least play this one. Definitely getting a lot of ideas here. I don't think they work exactly. Maybe we can try to go for a kind of simple plan here, like takes, check, and then play e5. And... He might block with one of these pieces. He goes for this. I think I might just still play e5. Keep it uh, simple and symmetrical. We'll see how uh, see how good his end games are. He should take and I would say king f6 or rook e8 are both good moves. Takes we're here. I think we'll just go for rook e1. And rook e8 takes. Here I think we'll go for f4. Bring our rook. I guess g4, g5 is kind of annoying for him. The one thing about the same color bishop endgames is as long as you ensure your pawns go on the opposite color of the bishop then you're usually in a in a good spot so i'm gonna go here and kind of execute that plan exactly i've got bishop here yeah so he's gonna defend it okay let's go for this one He's going to get king there and pawn to c5, so not much I can do about that. Again, kind of sticking with the theme here. I really want that square. We want. Especially a trade. And just kind of worm our bishop into that square and it's amazing what one pawn on the <laughs> the opposite color can do for you or rather on the same color as the bishops it's kind of a slightly crafty move give him some credit here let's see if he can defend all the way a good move would be this definitely Technically here, there was bishop there, so again, trying to keep the, wow, it's a great move. Trying to keep the moves alive here, bishop h5, oh, okay, kind of messed up there. Let's go ahead and pre-move this. Should have put it on h5.
and it'll be kind of a long process here. So we'll see if we actually get the um, get the win. Just because we have, so he'll go to h7, and then we go here, and you can see how this is a little bit tricky. Kind of tough to do, but we'll see. That might be enough to win. Yeah, when I'm down to like point something, I have to really just... At some point you take a risk and you need to make a move that's going to like take away the squares he's going to move to. I probably could have done one more pre-move and then sacked my queen somewhere. Maybe I did it one move too early, but it was just enough. Um, it was a really good conversion, but it was a really good defense. But he played a super equal game, never blundered. I decided to pick something super simple. They didn't really have any advantage here. He decided to trade. And I mean, I, I play these same color bishop end games literally all the time. And I have a really good record with them. And I mean, it starts with something as completely simple as just making sure that you fix one of the pawns on the same color as your bishops. My pawn will never be attacked by his bishop. So I'm living in a situation where there's just no no issues. He goes like this and then he defended really well. Like even spotting the move bishop e6, very impressive. Spotting the move, bishop f7, very impressive. Right? Like, this is unreal defense. 1400, finding these uh, resources. And then he should have gone to h5, which is admittedly the much easier move to spot. Right? Because he's found all the difficult ones where he's hanging his bishop. But if I take it, I lose my pawn. And then he just doesn't play this. And goes to g8, so I get my pawn up, and yeah, it was a slow conversion, but I didn't know how to do it much faster. Um, the idea is you like kick him out of this diagonal, and then he has to go here, and then you go back to kick him out of this diagonal, and yeah, there's not much he can do. And then, I mean, if he was a little bit faster, I don't think I would have won the game. I don't think I would have won the game. GG to our uh, our buddy here. Travis D9, thanks for the prime sub. Brand new one as well. Oh, wow. Is Tim uh, launching an investigation? You know, some would say that Tim is trying to start a filibuster. You know, to delay the proceedings, delay the systematic ascent. Thanks, Travesty. This guy has been a member since 2011, and Tim is launching accusations. 2011. Sleeper cell. This looks like a Tim match history to me. Tim's calling out a 2011 account. Fifty straight. Yes, fifty straight from Tim. You looked up a band you, you looked up a band account somehow. Well, Tim, when you're looking for evidence, sometimes you find the evidence that you want to be there. And I think this is a great example of that. Real T, I'm starting to see the, the voice behind your uh, messages from yesterday. Starting to see the real Tim here.
seems that Tim wanted to plant evidence to frame somebody who's had a chess.com account since the very beginning. But luckily, we were able to play with 0.2 accuracy more than our opponent and uh, emerge with the victory. Title Tuesday over? Uh, yeah, for a while. There'll be another one, though, in about three hours. I'll be playing it. T Boyles 3, thanks for the 31 months. Cheers, T Boyles. Appreciate that. Hello to LBC as well. Jeff, this is our speed run featuring all of our brand new on stream cooked up openings. You're going to see only originals in this one. Real T, Tim will be serving a lifetime ban for that. He will. Unless, of course, Tim wants to, you know, pay up another factor to get out of it. Um, you know, obviously we can, we can uh, see what we can do. So what's it going to be, Tim? Lifetime ban? Or a lifetime supply of wellness shots and 50% off your first Factor 75 box using our link. I think we may... Uh be able to make the paperwork disappear. We may be able to uh, overlook the blatant profiling from Tim here. We're at 14.15. We're going to be... Hunting for the next opponent here. Glad you like the music, MN2197. Jake AKC. Hello, Jake. Thanks so much for the reset. Three years on the dot. Cheers. Appreciate the prime, Jake. Archer Bear, thanks for the gifted sub as well. Next game. Okay. E4, E5. And we'll go with our knight E7 move. I kind of forgot when you play d4, I'm supposed to take it, I think. I could take this way as well, actually. I'm really sure it matters. Let's do this. It just goes back. I think let's get the bishop out. We want to play d6. Bishop g4. Okay, he goes knight g5. I'm not actually sure that he's threatening anything so let's do this and i feel like if queen h5 we could castle okay. it just goes back um bishop g4 looks like a pretty good move i think he'll go knight d2 and then maybe we could do something interesting just knight d4 and just add the pressure on again 
Queen d5, so again, not threatening anything, but does get out of this pin, so I have to be a little careful here. If I take, that's check. Bishop e6. Hmm. I can take with the bishop. And then maybe knight takes f3 check, king up, but it, truthfully, it's not really what... It's not really what I want to do. Let's think for a second here. Um, we also have a moment right now to potentially deal with this queen. Night before is kind of an idea. Like if we sort of remove the queen and then look to take, that could work. This one, he's just going to go back. I don't think we're doing enough there. Hmm. Okay. Let's try the uh, aggressive approach. Queen takes here. Bishop a4 in the future. I'll probably just move my king. Queen here, we have rook b8. And I think the queen is getting trapped. Okay, so I'm pretty sure the queen is trapped here. Has nowhere to go. The only thing we want to make sure is that something like this doesn't all of a sudden work. I don't think it does. Bishop check, we can go here. Knight takes, we can actually just recapture. I think the queen is still trapped. And then this one, we can also take... Knight takes, we can take back, and still the queen is trapped. <laughs> so it's like, unfortunately the problems were not actually solved there. Yeah, and rook f8, king back, will be a pretty good follow-up, I think. Knight c2, bishop e2. I feel like there's a lot of easy next moves to make as well. So, again, if I take, I'm really struggling. <laughs> it's like you're, every single move my opponent's doing is kind of clever, because it's like, oh, if I take the wrong way, the queen's out. But still, not actually saving the, the queen, which I feel like should be the main goal. Okay, maybe we can come back here and we get knight d5, knight e2, and a nice little checkmate here. Just a cute finish there. Good to know those patterns. Open h file can be used. Yeah, pretty much a puzzle rush right there. A successful opening, but after d4, I have to remember, we do need to take. It's the one case where this knight g6 move is actually not good due to knight g5. So knight g5 would have really hurt us there. So I think the thing is to take. And now if, if knight there, we have knight e5, which works out a little bit better. Nice. GG. Whoa, that is a... Crazy piece set. <laughs> and with e4, e5, like, uh, okay, e6. <laughs> Didn't feel like attacking the pawn. Uh, can't blame you there, bud. I think we're just going to be going right back into d4 here. We'll have to take this, and we could play d4, but consistent with this opening is the d3 setup like this, so I'm going to go for it.
think both are okay. I'm going to go queen e2. Gives the extra option of knight c4 instead of knight e4. And if the bishop moves, bishop f4, we gain a bit of time. Not forgetting to play a4 to cement our knight there. And the move knight d5 is actually going to happen, so I want to be ready for that. Knight d5, bishop d2, and then rook d1, and bishop can slide back to uh, c1. I want to play bishop c1, because my bishop's not doing anything here. So all I really need to do is stay on this diagonal, but I don't like bishop c1 when my rook's on a1. So... Rook e1 next, bishop c1 is always ready to be played, and then if needed, my queen can slide back to c2. Our knight's pretty comfortable there, and at some point, pushing this h-pawn is going to become a, just a nice thing to do in the, in the meantime. I'm not sure what setup he's going to go for. Okay, he's bringing his bishop back. I definitely feel like doing the same. It's nice because now this square can be utilized by my other pieces and perhaps the queen as well. Okay, let's throw h4 out there. Maybe we can spook him. It's playing well so far. I'm going to jump into e5 while I can. Perhaps some kind of queen h5 move. And f6, you know, I feel like I'd want to encourage f6. I think this knight is going to move next. Go here and see what's what's about to happen. Whoa, that was uh, an unnecessary move. So what he really needed to do was defend his bishop because I was threatening c4 with the pin, but instead he just moved the piece right away, which was my whole point that. That it was pinned there. This bishop can always come back to f3. Knight g4 doesn't do anything on its own. Okay. Let's just tickle the rook a little bit. King g2 is, well, I'm gonna say a great move to play no matter what. Go a5. Oh. Leave the bishop here. We can take next. There's also a nice bishop f4 move. I think we can just push here. The rooks are really uncomfortably placed, actually. GG to shocks. Um, yeah, truthfully, we didn't really get our exact opening here because against the Sicilian, I play this move. Most people play knight c6 if they're kind of paying attention. 
and then we pre-move c3, and then they take, and we get d4, and we gain a lot of tempi. He just played e6, which admittedly is a weird response to that, but it means we just play this system. And this is a position that we get a lot from uh, a different variation that we play against the French. So, kind of used to this, which is why I went for it. Okay, e4, e5. And bishop b5. We'll play our beautiful looking queen f6. And I'll set up my pieces to prevent d4. Okay, knight b3. We can go back. Oh, interesting. Don't think we're too bothered by this. Let's castle and play d6. Knight h5, we can slide the queen over. We're also kind of uh, playing bishop g4 here. All part of the plan. Okay, I mean... I know this doesn't look like much, but... Those double pawns really uh, shouldn't be good. This is going to be played, so I feel like I need something against that. And I'm going to play the very aggressive looking f5. Yeah, knight takes, of course. Knight takes here, although maybe I can still make that work. I'm going to take with the pawn. I think we can do this. Actually, taking and playing f4 is also a really nice idea, but um, I think we can do this and take, and we should win a pawn here. Do we win one pawn? Yeah, he takes there, we take here. This bishop only has a couple choices. I feel like if he goes here, okay, if he goes here, maybe we just take. King g2 and bring the rook here. It's funny because there is bishop a a7 here, but it's a pretty strange move. Yeah, and that one, I wasn't concerned because I thought he was losing a piece here. Okay, good game. Yeah, even if rook d1, there's rook e2. So my rook is like almost out of squares, but not quite. I think f5 was the right idea here. Um, this is just a comfortable opening, like getting the queens off the board, but also damaging the pawn structure. I'll take this every single time. This is exactly what we want. The whole point of playing the early queen f6 is if you can get somebody to give up the idea of playing d4 and just play d3, exactly what you want from the opening. h6, super important to stop bishop g5. And then our setup is knight e7, d6, castle. I like to castle first, just because d6, they might get d4 using the pin. So I like to make sure that I'm always preventing d4 with my queen as well. And then, yeah, as soon as you play d6, you're threatening bishop there. Knight comes to g6. Knight comes to h4 or f4. Ton of pressure. So if he didn't play h3 here, then maybe it could have even been worse for him. Okay, let's play e4. c3, and we'll pre-move the knight f3, which usually gets our opponents to take. Take this pawn, and usually after playing this, a lot of people play bishop c6. We're fine with that too. Knight there, the move d4 is a pretty normal one. Um, I'm going to stick with the theme 
which is just to play d3, surprisingly. And then develop like this. And you may recognize this type of setup from a couple games ago, which is why I played it, because it was familiar. Okay, happy to play h3. Queen d7 will hit this pawn uh, next, so we'll just get ready to handle that. I think we can also jump in with this one. King h2, uh, if he wants to go here in general, there's h6, bishop g5 was a, a move, let's go here. Okay, he goes here, which is kind of crazy because it allows the pawns to be doubled. If I win this pawn, he does win this pawn, but I have to feel that we're going to have good chances there. There is a fancy move, bishop takes h6, but I, I don't think it's any better. So I suppose we'll do this. And we have the option to go g4 and then take but black gets some counterplay in with that one so i'm actually going to choose not to go for that i'm going to choose to go for this one encouraging knight takes or sorry bishop takes h3 and then i'll take this okay. obviously <laughs> if we could play uh Queen g4 check, then the game would end very, very quickly. Queen here, queen takes, knight f5, queen here takes. We may be able to get away with this. Knight f5. I think we do. Barely, though. We can give it a try. Go queen here. And after bishop takes, we're not even really taking back. I'm actually playing knight f5. Uh, there's a good move by him. I like this one. Just because this is not that comfortable. Probably have to still give it a go. This is a bit more patient, though. No time for patience. I'll go rook h1. Uh, trying to line everything up here. Um, these checks are really annoying, I have to admit. So is maybe just a simple move like that, but... Okay. Don't have, like, an immediate win, so we might have to... Retreat our knight. I'm gonna go here. Maybe we can <laughs> play a <laughs> gimmick move. Um, takes takes knight g6, knight g5. Maybe even knight takes e5. I think knight g5 looks like a fun one. A rook gets in here. He can't. Well, I was gonna say he can't really play that. Um, goes and and does it but okay there's no knight f4 let's make sure we remember that we can go like this Need a position that we can pre-move, so I'm gonna go like this. And it's relatively pre-movable now.
I'll go here for rook b6. Oh, wow. Okay. He's starting to just hang his his pieces. Oh. <laughs> Not really able to predict a single move of his. <laughs> I think maybe we like just get it. We might be a move too slow. I think we just get the pawn. Yeah, just in time. One move to spare. That was really weird. I uh, went on a streak of not being able to predict a single move. And I think it kind of started here. Uh, which I guess is a credit to him, but man. Couldn't expect a single one. Rook here, like rook trade. Okay, that happens. Rook check? <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, he's probably going to check me. He does and he plays this. I'm like, okay, here. And I'm expecting the check again. I should have honestly pre-moved this because check or check. I could have then reacted. But then he takes. And I went here because I expected that check. Now I expected this check. He didn't do that either. And then I expected this check. He didn't do that either. I'm like, holy smokes. <laughs> Guy's getting me on every single move here. <laughs> uh, good game. We barely survived uh, to not lose it. What happened in this one? Oh yeah, this was our fun attack here. I thought this was, I thought this was kind of cool. Bishop takes f6. I think it is the best move. Yeah, and I mean at some point f4 f5 is gonna happen, and rook h7 g7. So yeah, I think he kind of played the best move, but it was a nice little tactic there to attack. I I love these positions. I have to say they're different. And you just get this really easy game. Sometimes I put the queen back on c2 and play d3, and then I play bishop e2 and the exact same stuff. But whether the bishop is here or on e2, we have the same ideas. Or so I think. Thanks for the 16 months with Prime. Uh, Sphinx, thanks for the two months. Been watching on YouTube for years. Thanks for the sub here as well. Happy to have the YouTube frogs make the trip over. Illicit cabbage. Thank you for the prime sub, Illicit cabbage. All right, 1441. See if we can keep the uh, the streak going. We were stalled by our tough opponent here. Okay, e4, e5. Ready to uh, play our openings. Yes, the three and a half knights, knight e7. Not participating in this knight f6 stuff. After d4, let's bring the knight to g6. Basically, we always want setups with black where we go knight on c6 and knight on g6 is kind of what we go for okay as usual let's get that bishop out play d6 setting up the classic bishop g4 bishop g5 actually loses a piece as he falls for it so that's a nice uh it's going to have to showcase that one way or another, but my opponent, luckily, was able to give a live demonstration. Okay, knight's threatening c7. We have basically two good ways to handle this. Queen d8 or bishop b6. Queen d8's a little more reliable, um, just simple. And queen g3, we can just castle. Knight e5 is available. c6 coming up. Maybe bishop e6 to take. And yeah, as always, let's not forget, we're up a piece, so any kind of trades would be fantastic. He can try to push the pawn. 
Yeah, so he's going here. I guess you can imagine his next move is going to be on to e5, which does make a lot of sense. Um, knight e5 still looks pretty good. Also g6. He'll go for this. He doesn't have knight f6. If he did, it would be a big problem. He might go back here to set up knight f6, but after this, I'll play knight e5. You can play knight f6, I'll play king g7, and you don't really have any follow-up. Your knight's hanging, your queen's hanging. So we might see this as uh, something that will be tough to react to. There's also no moves like this which support knight f6, so you can go queen h6. But then I'll probably look to kick this knight away and also reroute my bishop to cover all my dark square weaknesses. So we should be all right here. I kind of like this move. Feels the most uh, most safe. And also rook e3 to h3 can't happen because of this and because of that. Here we go. Queen back to d2. I think we just want to get rid of this uh, knight. May as well develop a piece at the same time. It's he's smart to keep pieces on the board. Gotta gotta give him that. He he certainly understands what's required here. Let's move out of the way so the rook can <laughs> can do something. Just bring the pieces into the middle here. Might see g3, but he doesn't have to. Rook d1 is just fine. Rook d8. Knight on g3 pretty much always prompts me to uh, think of queen h4. Just a really well-placed piece against the knight there. Same thing goes for knight on g6. Queen h5 is always well-placed. And if knight e2, we can play bishop g4 and go for a trade of something. Okay, I think we will show our intentions here. Let's take, oh wow, queen trade is obviously very helpful. Okay. Let's just attack this pawn. We have more pieces, so we'll be able to win. Uh, we'll be able to win that pawn. GG to crisscross. We won a, ta a piece very early from a kind of basic tactic, but it's a good one to know. When the knights are challenging one another, you're not really at risk for bishop g5. I always like this system because we get a knight on e5 and bishop uh, g4 with queen f6 is such a huge threat. And even another knight jumping into d4 like this pin, you can just win very quickly with. GG. Yeah, 928, thanks for the five years, Jason. Tier 3 from Yeah, 928, and a gifted sub to Wild Hacks. Celebrating your five year resub with Buddy Sam. Well, thanks a lot, Jason. Yeah, five years. Hell of a long time. We got a guy right behind TN Khan, hunting for his five year badge soon. 56 months. I thought it was a pretty good game. 22 months from Paul JB125 and a tier 3. Let's not forget. 
Thanks, Tone Cruise, for the 42 months. And thanks to the big fella. Five years and change. Canty showing the way on to year six. Thanks for the 61 months there, uh, GM Canty. Let's go. Got the midday hype in here. Title Tuesday later. Doing our speed run right now. These are all openings that we've invented ourselves. Good to see the big fella himself here. Always crossing paths with Canty these days in uh, Toronto or for chess.com events. So I'm sure we'll see each other soon. Hello to Wild Hacks. Wellness check on Sam. Coming back to Canada soon. What's soon? The guy's been gone a long time. Soon could be in two months, you know? All right, let's get another game in. This will be for 1450. Hopefully we get one of our openings here. Okay. E5 and not really with the move D6, but we'll wait and see. Usually uh the guys want to play bishop C4 and actually C6, I would say, quite literally prevents knight D5. Okay, queen f6, I guess we'll play d4. Why do I feel like I'm kind of playing against one of our systems here, you know? <laughs> I like his energy, you know, h6, queen f6. He hasn't developed any pieces yet, but you can see the similarities, right, to some of our knight g6 stuff. It really is the same. I'm going to play here because... Bishop g4 looks like his next intention. Okay, and here we go. He's doing this. So let's see if we can show maybe how to handle stuff like that, which does look like it's on the annoying side. So I'm probably going to be putting my bishop back to f1. I find that it's... The easiest way to handle a potential knight f4 move it goes a6. I'll definitely sneak in a move like a4, gain some space over there. Okay, I'll just continue to develop. I might throw that move in right now, but I think what I'm going to do first is this, because I'm almost uh, sure that he's going to respond with c5, and... The result is that none of his pieces actually have anywhere to go right now. Okay, I'm going to play knight h2 because this looks like a very likely queen trap. And the nice thing is if he plays h5, um, h4 threatens to trap the queen again. So that worked out really well. But the main thing was we just, all his pieces are like his knight on d7 is pretty much trapped. His bishop is pretty much trapped. His knight can't go anywhere. His bishop on b7 is trapped. Like... Actually, almost every single piece that he had in the position couldn't move. So, he worked himself into a pretty uncomfortable spot. Let's go h4. Take with the knight here. To uh, reroute it somewhere a little bit nicer. This also comes with the knight takes h6 idea, but really the d6 pawn hanging is the, is the big deal. Again, notice how this knight has nowhere to go. G3, H4 pawn structure against the knight is always the best. Let's go here, trade off that piece on C8. My queen is very secure here. It's not really going anywhere. 
right. Probably just need to reroute some pieces here in 97. So I think the correct move is probably this to hit the rook and then uh, h5 to win the knight. This move allows knight h4, kappa. Okay. He's not moving his king, so I don't really need to... I don't really need to do anything about this yet. Like, I don't have to take. So I'll just continue to build up pressure. Okay. Now he moves, which means now I'll take. Take. Okay. Let's just double the rooks. A lot of ways to break through here, but um, I'll play rook g4 and I think this is the simplest. Rook f5, and then, well, perhaps even the introduction of the final piece will be okay. So here it comes, guys. Move f5 is going to be. In there, quick as a flash. Start with this. Knight f5. Running mate, so he kind of has to play rook. G6. He doesn't, and that's going to be a mate on the side of the board there. GG. Yeah, we didn't really get one of our openings in this one because i mean d6 we don't have anything too special against but our usual plan is to actually put a knight into d5 the only reason this was kind of interesting is because our opponent sort of went for our setup and so i got a chance to showcase kind of how to handle a queen f6 knight g6 idea where you go to f4 and this is a pretty good example right here if he ever played this, I was always just going to play g3. That's why I have my bishop set up on f1. If he moved this knight, then I couldn't play g3 because h3 is hanging. So if this knight moved, I would probably play king h2 so that my h pawn's defended. And again, I can meet knight f4 with g3 and just boot the knight right back out. And then it's nice to close things up here. Because again, the knight's like trapped now on d7. The bishop doesn't have much to do. The knight will be trapped as soon as I play g3. And the bishop is terrible on b7. So. In this case, I knew knight h2 was a pretty good chance of uh, being successful. Because if h5, then h4. And I renew the exact same threat. Also h5, bishop e2. And if he pushes, I have knight g4 again. So. Worked out pretty nicely there. MN2197, thanks for the 39 months. Welcome back, MN. I think you've been enjoying the music today. We'll take that. Retina Vault, thanks for the three months. Are you supporting these guys? Not enough. So it means you're doing it right. Hey there, Valentinian. We had another resub from Big Val. 52. Thank you to Midday Valentinian. Welcome to Tuesday Energy Val. Yeah, realty is the litmus test, Tim. You know, if they, if they can't get past the uh, realty, then... All right, we got 1450. Not satisfied yet, though. This is the 1500 push.
Okay, d4 this time. We're going to play e5. This is the undefeated... our opponent's going to do this and it could actually be like a very quick uh, end to the game if he does he goes f4 so probably a little bit smarter it's not a great move obviously there's a lot wrong with it but um it does get the job done in terms of that checkmate so this move if i take i guess he's planning queen a4 uh still doesn't really look like a good situation for him but But I do see the intention. We could do bishop c5 here. We could also take and just allow this. I don't think it's that dangerous for us at all. Um, I'm going to go bishop c5. Okay, let's take just some pressure here. Even rookie one, like... Could be some kind of knight f4 move. Have to be a little careful. Yeah, smart move, honestly. Decides to just get out of the way. Especially because taking here, then you have to think about what happens if the uh, rook goes behind. I think we should probably still take it. Strange as that is. Not the best. I think I'm going to castle, you know, safety first and all that. But uh, I think I probably could have got away with it. Just to, doesn't seem worth maybe missing something down the line and potentially losing a piece there, so. I think it was something we could have captured, but I don't mind playing this. E4 is the only move that I'm even considering for him. Okay, it goes here. To be honest, maybe we can go knight takes E3, but I was always just going to go C6. Much simpler, and E4 can be taken. Yeah. Okay, we'll push that. If bishop b6, maybe there was f5, so let's keep that defended. Bishop f5, uh, rook e8. I think these moves will be next. Knight g3 can slide into d3 here. And I think d3 looks good. We have some nice bishop moves coming up. Uh, knight, knight there, interesting. If I go here, there is rook takes e2. And bishop takes e3, so might do this in the proper way, which is going to be this and this, I think. That's actually helpful. That was a that was a really bad move, unfortunately. Yeah, so it's a good idea. I think what I'm going to do now, though, is just hand over material with rook d8. And rook d1 is unstoppable, so it's not going to be something that has an answer. I think what the best 
way to corral the king is probably like this to just stop it from running away. Yeah, I think bishop g1 doesn't really have a way to avoid the two checkmates we have planned for him. I was thinking of g5, g4, which is also pretty nice, but yeah, this is, this is reliable. GG. We got our England gambit, gambit here. I mean, th this undefeated opening is, has been reliable for a long time. You might not view it as a new opening, but that's only because you've seen it here a lot. It's still our opening. We'll take that. Pacific Heights, thanks for the two months. I don't know if I love you after two months, but we're working on our relationship, Pacific Heights. Moistud, thank you for the 40 months. He says hello to all the Boston Bruins fans. Well, you heard the man. Speak up. We are those... Where are those rats? Those Boston Bu Bruin fans. Where are you at? Boo, Boston. Hello to BJH as well. A mighty long time, eh? A mighty long time indeed. A hundred and six months. A hundred and six. Thank you for the resub today, sir. Yeah, serious allegations, eh, Ralph? Serious allegations from the rodent Moistud there. Accusing BJH of uh, being naked. No credentials when BJH just uh, resubbed for 106 months, not uh, five minutes ago. Wow, that's, uh, that's quite something there. And you shouldn't, BJH. Always have to remember to value yourself. Well, Realty, I think uh, what you're forgetting is that Moistud is, uh, is Indian as well. Uh, you know, it all, it all really adds up. Eh? You know, I'll, I'll go out and say what you don't want to put out there in the world, but it, it does feel like targeting from Tim today. But Moistad will be, uh, will definitely be remembering this. Trying to call out a 106 month or for no credentials. That'll definitely go right on the, uh, right on the case file there. Let's remember, Moistad has been subbed for 40 months. So BJH almost has him tripled. I mean, he's, he's got him lapped and he's already running around for the third time. Val says Moist should be on trial. Agreed, Valentinian. We can't let the rodent Moist that get away with this behavior. Moist says I have nobody willing to prosecute me. Well, let's uh, let's ask the audience. Is anyone willing to prosecute Moist that? For crimes against the crown, and most importantly, crimes against BJH. Uh, only one person said yes, and it was Nerd Bro. Okay, Nerd Bro, you're the only one that stepped up, so we're, we gotta pick you, man. You're the only person. Nobody else was willing to prosecute and defend BJH. 
Yep, we got it. Okay, nerd bro it is. Oh, now everyone wants to do it. It's too late, guys. Nerd bro, uh, you know, he's the only one that stepped up when it mattered. Everyone's trying to pile in now. Thomas says, are we banning Moist that? Oh, you should have, you should have seen it, Thomas. Trying to accuse a 106 months up of not having his credentials. Absurd, really. Nerdbro says, I got two underscores in my username and I'm on trackpad. Okay. Uh, I'm liking our chances here. I think he said he was around 1500, but maybe he meant 1500 rapid. Is your blitz 1500, nerd bro? This is the kind of representation you've got, BJH. 1500 blitz on trackpad. Okay, nerd bro will be heading to chess.com slash play slash online. Moist, are you ready to defend against the ever dangerous nerd bro? I think it's got two underscores, he said, Ralph. But maybe it doesn't? Because the other one didn't work, and yours worked. Nerd bro, you sure there's two underscores? It's the other way around. <laughs> he doesn't even know his username. We're off to a good start here. Moistud is surely trembling. Surely trembling. We're going to log into the KNVB account just for this moment. Just to facilitate this match between the one single underscore nerd bro. Okay. Nerd bro. And moist that. Good luck, guys. All right. Well, GG's. You tried. Yeah, it was a good attempt. You almost had him. And unfortunately, the defense was too strong there from Moistet. Yeah, we needed to see a little more from you there, nerd bro. You, uh, you know, you were in there with a shout. I thought you did well. It was a, good, a decent opening. Kind of started well, but... You know, got flagged in the end. You tab to mute Twitch. Wow. Just you gotta love that honesty. The guy's being punished for doing things properly. Moistad uh, with a good defense. Very impressive. Surely another chance, you think so, Tim, for that... For the honesty, you know, he was making sure to mute the, the tab and everything. Don't think the trackpad was going to flag the guy, though. That's fair. That's fair. One has to wonder why Thomas N. Haverford was able to make the first move so quickly, you know? Almost makes me think he 
didn't have the mute twitch, you know, which would be, would be in clear violation of the rules. Gory wants to prosecute with three seconds. Gory, you think you can prosecute Moistad in a three second match? AMSXY <laughs> org. Man, I'd love to look at the uh, chat history on that. 2014, I think. Gory's interested, eh? Hmm. Nerd Bro has paved the way for Gory to step in. He walked so Gory could run. You might lag and lose? Oh, Gory, you're trolling me. We've got Moistud back against the wall, and you don't even sound confident here. Jesus. All right, we're back to Nerd Bro. Gory's untrustworthy. Nerd Bro? I think you've got this, man. You can go ahead and mute the tab right now. To give yourself uh, the best possible shot. You ready there, nerd bro? We'll give you a fighter's chance. 43 months from a throbbing deep meerkat meat. Thank you very much, sir. If no answer, he's ready. I agree. Nope, it wasn't ready. False start, false start. Guard Father 26, thanks for the 37 months. Go, nerd bro. Slightly better already. We'd love to see it. Thanks a lot, Guardfather. Red Sun. Almost at the very special five year mark. Thank you for the 59 months, Red Sun. Okay, Val is predicting this, this. Valentinian the Prophet. Val knows one thing. It's his 1500th. Valentinian, an expert. Patterns guy Valentinian strikes again. Just like uh, he called. Knight e5. Knight takes e5. Go Val. By the way, Nerd Bro is low key outplaying Moistud down a queen. <laughs> like, it actually is. By the way, I would play white here. Not, not trolling at all. I would take the white pieces. We have two bishops and a very nice pawn structure. 
I mean, this is like killer. Oh. Dude, if we took this one, I'm telling you, really winning. This is very unfortunate. Tim's move, bishop c6. A disgusting suggestion. Tim, bishop c6, and Valentinian, bishop e5. Notice the difference. One is the best move in the position, and one loses on the spot. Very tough. Tough to see him go out like this. Tim is raising a point that he suggested it when it hit the queen with the rook on the board. Okay. So he must have meant here. Okay. Bishop c6. Yep. Much different. Yep. Much different, right? Nothing changed. Thank you, Tim. Yes. Great suggestion. <laughs> Dude, nerd bro has put up great resistance. Down the queen initially, down the queen later. Like, I, you know, I, color me impressed. Look at this energy. Man, nerd bro really, uh, he went out swinging. You gotta be impressed. It was a good attempt, considering a terrible blunder, but he couldn't avoid the blunder earlier. Remember, Valentinian already predicted it, so it was forced. So, despite Valentinian's uh, voodoo magic, he kind of outplayed Moist down a queen here. Nerd bro says no comment. That was absolute trash. I mean... I know, but he still, he still found a way to win despite how bad he played. Got to give him some credit there. Don't worry, nerd bro. Someone in chat predicted that you were going to hang your queen, so obviously you didn't have any control over the situation anymore. It wasn't really your fault. Yeah, in this position, I think bishop takes e5, and I'm so serious. I would rather play with the white pieces here. You have great compensation. I'll play the TT in an hour and a half. Yep. It was a nice game. It was a nice game. You were up against, you know, someone five, six hundred points higher rated, so. Can't expect the world. Well, we have uh, Valentinian and Moistad uh, here, or rather, uh, Valentinian and uh, Sam here. So, I think we can run that match again. Yeah, Valentinian with the queen and uh, Sam with the two bishops. Maybe Valentinian ad adopts wild hacks. I think that's probably the case. It seems that the uh, rodent weaponry is strong. Somehow, Moistad avoids yet another ban.
I don't know how he does it, folks. I don't know how he does it. Val adopts Wild Hacks the same day Tim Cannon hits 2,000 Blitz. <laughs> Which, coincidentally, is the same day that Wild Hacks will be adopting Val. The same day Salty beats someone over a thousand ELO and bullet. You heard it here first. Tim Cannon is on record saying I'm definitely hitting 2,000 blitz. Clipped and shipped. Go Tim. Well, nerd bro, I can't hand you a ban for that performance. I was too impressed by it. You know, it's nice to see you hold those standards for yourself, but I was I was impressed. It's still not enough to, to ban the rodent, but I thought you played well. You did, Moistad, but that's fine. It happens. A bit of a shaky conversion. Yep, gotta be gotta be sub to be banned, so you're you're safe there, nerd bro. All right, a brief interlude. I'm gonna take a short break. Might get some food together as well. I'm going to hit 1500 in this series. We got Title Tuesday in an hour and a half. And we still have our viewer tournament this evening. Hopefully, everyone here will find time to play our evening viewer tournament, which is effectively Title Tuesday format for you guys to play. Hopefully, we can get uh, Wild Hacks evening appearance. Tim will uh, very likely be entering as well, as I believe he needs to uh, hit a nice rating. Either today or latest tomorrow. It all depends on the systematic account. We're slowly encroaching on Tim's rating. What time? Same time as every week. Sometimes we, uh, we need to move it. Like, you know, when I'm going to see Nicki Minaj. But, otherwise, it'll always be right after the late title Tuesday. So... 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Did the factor come? Absolutely it did, Brian. Absolutely it did. Factor has arrived. It's in the building. And I'll be doing a uh, factor stream. Thinking that I'll do it Thursday. This Thursday, where uh, I'll just try a bunch of the different dishes on stream tell you guys about factor but yeah they arrived the, the fridge is packed right now i love it i did see Nicki minaj yes in toronto mr uh, wild hacks uh, i actually didn't go from fred again to Nicki minaj i've been a Nicki fan for a long long time sir fred is a very recent addition we won't accept Nicki slander here I did not wear pink, no. I did not wear pink. I think the, uh, well, there was a dress code for Nicki Minaj. And yeah, if you're not gay or overweight, then uh, not allowed to wear pink.
You bet Nikki could beat you in chess? Yeah, you'd let her win. <laughs> I could read between the lines. Oh, Tim is going to be owing many factors, Moist. Let's not forget, there's a factor owed from Tim for the original bet with Chief. There's also a factor soon to be owed on stream for the systematic bet. There's also a factor owed from Tim for his profiling and blatant discrimination showcased today. <laughs> Not alpha enough. Oh, I've got my uh, I've got my fair share of pink, but man, the the pink Nicki Minaj wears they go hard. Obama envy they go hard. I wasn't ready to join that. Like if a protest broke out, I didn't want to be associated. I thought I'd fly under the radar, suss the crowd out. No, I don't need to be part of that. I got I got my pink. I got pink in the closet. A little salmon for the boys. All right, I'm back in a few minutes. We're going to continue the speed run. We took a uh, small break there. Factor has arrived. Tim owes some more factors. 15 months from GM, no chance ever. Thanks for the prime. I'll be back in a few minutes. Title Tuesday and late Title Tuesday happening this evening as well. We'll switch to kick for that.
All right. Christo. Ah, 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 thank you. Welcome. Appreciate the raid. We're in the middle of a speed run right now. Good timing. You have a feed day rating, Sam. 1780. Wow. Do you think you're the only guy on planet Earth who has a higher fee day than um, chess.com blitz? Definitely an achievement. Can't think of anyone like that. You're learning E4 and C5. Hmm. Yeah, Wild Tax is the OTB inspiration. He leads the way for online specialists. Guys like Salty have a lot to learn. Chocolate covered M and M's, man. Guilty pleasure. I saw that Magnus was playing A5, Rook A6. Magnus is a certified troll. But we know that. This is not a Rook A3 speedrun. Nope. Sorry to disappoint you. Yeah, Realty and Yenner will have a nice matchup in UTT. You graduated college at 20? I guess that makes sense. I was thinking in my head, like, that's crazy, but I guess that makes sense. I never finished it, but when I was in first year university, I was 17. So 17, 18, 19, 20. Makes sense. If you win, you get mod. What do I get if I win?
Man, Kellyo, thanks for the seven months. Tried. Wow. Congratulations, though, the chess bird. Taking the feeling of taking your last exam ever must be <laughs> a little bit uh, rewarding. m nims are all mine, Durfee boy. I'm hogging them. All right, let's continue. Brief intermission. 1460. Let's not get distracted from the goal. E4. C6. Okay, he hits this with this. Knight B1, definitely possible. I'm gonna go Knight E2 this time. Just try a different, try a different move out. Okay. Develop the knight. I want to keep this bishop available to develop to like b5 or c4. I don't really want to play d3 and have it locked in, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's play bishop d2. I'll take with the queen. That's going to be very helpful for me. I, at some point, would consider playing that move anyway, so the assistance here is appreciated. A5, we'll just play A4 to deal with that. Get castled and queen out, rook over. We should be pretty, pretty good there. This pawn is hanging, but... Just like, probably not the most relevant thing to go after here. Yeah, rook to e1, and I feel like we should be doing quite good here. I'm going to play bishop c4 and b3, and that's going to be the, I think the last thing we really need to do in terms of solidifying okay now he wants to play c5 but at this point we moved on to other things bishop h6 knight h5 there's going to be checkmate in a couple moves i think or at least a winning attack that's for sure let's start with this one okay let's go for this check We can go ahead and start with the bishop here. And that's a nice mate in there. This is something that we prepared to play against the Karokan, but we really worked a little bit more on this and then the idea is to bring this knight back to f2 surprisingly effective but against d4 we have the option uh, knight b1 or knight e2 i wonder if e5 knight there takes takes I was thinking about this
But yeah, knight g3, knight, I have three and bishop out. Seems all right. We'll take it. We didn't get the main line of our opening, but he didn't take the pawn. Can't force your opponents to do, to do things. D4, we're going to go for the undefeated. Let's play queen h4 and see how he's going to handle it. Okay, good move by our opponent here, queen f3. Uh, followed by not a great move by our opponent there, bishop to c4. Knight e4, maybe there's g3, so I'm going to keep it simple with this. Takes, takes. I mean, it's kind of forced, right? Because the bishops attacked as well. And now with this pawn attacked, opponent kind of has to play bishop e3. I just feel like this has been a very successful opening. We won a center pawn. All is well. Let's cover b5. It's kind of annoying to deal with. Bring our knight out. Well, that wasn't very difficult. What the heck? A little uh, backwards knight move. There we go. That's all it took. Am I playing England against d4 if white takes? Uh, I'm playing the England against d4 even if white doesn't take. That's the opening. d4, e5. That's it. But specifically, I'm playing the variation where you sack a queen, which is the one we invented on stream so many years ago. England is bad. It's hard to say the England's bad when it's got a name like the Undefeated. Never lost with that opening in my life. Force a draw. Thanks for the prime for 65 months. Hello. Cheers, Mr. Fad. Hello, Jeff. Hello. Back from the office, Jeff? Yeah. <laughs> I found out I'm going to the field for a week. So... <laughs> Wasn't a good day. <laughs> now, this is the field that you need to participate in. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Rip. Exactly, JT Foxy. Just a, a bunch of commuters here. Just a bunch of commuters. Thanks, Baz Maniac, for the 20 subs. One can only attribute that to the presence of Jeff. Thank you, Baz. Thank you, Baz. Double thank you, because I see KNVB got one of those. I am airtight. Apprehensively from someone like you, but yes, I am. As Maniac hopes you're well, Jeff. I hope you're well as well. Wow, do they well, bro? <laughs> it's Nell Eric, thanks for the two years with Prime. Prime from Fad, no. 20 subs from Baz Maniac. We're at 1477 and still trucking. The 1500 push. E4, E5. Yeah, Knight C3 kind of throws us off a little bit. But we're going to respond with Knight here, Bishop C5. Oh, I usually expect this, but we didn't see it this time. Maybe we can uh, opt to plunge. Okay, let's go for this setup then. D6, castle. Yeah, I want to avoid taking because I want the F4 square for myself, so 
I think I'm going to play here. This move would be great if I could take, but the knight's going to jump into d5, so not much I can do about that. Let's secure that. Let's get castled. I need to somehow remove this knight, because I, I want to put my queen here. Be great to see that. That would be helpful. Okay, interesting move. Knight to h2. And I can't really move my queen because bishop takes and knight c7 will, will happen. Go for this. Takes, we're going to take back. Knight a5 becomes a pretty tempting option. Also, this move is very <laughs> provocative. Extremely provocative. What the heck? So I can take here. I guess white's planning to take with the pawn. Do something like that. Otherwise, I could take here and then take on c4. Everything looks good. Kind of tough to say which one is better. I'll go for this. Yeah, the Rook F4 move is a bit strange. H4. I'm less concerned about this pawn and more about just kind of developing with tempo. Okay, now we get to take it with tempo. That's even better. Take this one as well. Maybe rook e8. Might go queen f1, which runs into that. Okay. Bring the rook in. My knight jumping into f4 also looks pretty good. I have a feeling we're going to see this. Well, I'll definitely take. Not really opposed to a trade. Definitely not. Can maybe triple up here. And I'm just hunting for trades like queen e2, takes, takes. Like, that would be good for me. Yeah, all trades. All trades. Let's go here actually because if he takes everything, I'm convinced this makes my life easier.
and a little step ladder to finish things off. GG. It was a good fight, but man, that F4 move was a little much. I thought he handled our setup pretty nicely, though, I have to say. But still, we got it. H6, knight to G6. Here, I'd like to take, but pawn takes. Covers both of those squares, and I'm trying to play on the dark squares. Yeah, F4 was premature. But I'm about to play knight A5, probably, and then... Perhaps take this, or get my queen out here, play knight f4. So yeah, even though I thought his h3, knight h2 was pretty good, I don't think he followed up correctly. Queen h5, knight g4 looked at least like a, a decent idea. But still, we got our, our setup that we're always looking for with e45. It always involves a knight on g6, queen f6, h6, if possible. So, very nice. Metal Chess, thanks for the 44 months, tier 3. We're stuck with you. Are we stuck in here with you, or are you stuck in here with us? Still not sure. Yeah, knight a5 instead of bishop e6 would have also been a fine move. Absolutely. Knight a5 in general, I, I like the move overall, so... Never gonna be too bothered by it. Um, yeah, even this... I, I will get my hands on the bishop eventually. f5, and this would be a pretty nice position for black, I would say. Alright! Let's go for the next one. E4. Got knight c3 coming. And on knight f6, we want to jump in here. And on bishop c5, knight takes e5 is known to be a pretty good move here. But now it's a very good move here. I mean, this is fine. Bishop h6 might be unnecessarily fancy, or it might be necessarily fancy. I think it should be okay. Sometimes you have to be careful, like if the knight's not developed, then black takes and goes like queen c1. But we should be covered here. And knight d4 is also going to be covered. So I think it can work out. Also takes, takes, king f8 or something. Like you always get a little scared that the queen's going to get trapped in there, but once again, I think we're all right here. The idea is that knight takes loses the queen, queen takes loses the rook, and no capture results in bishop g7 afterwards. I think that's a uh, good decision overall. Um, so what should we do here? I think I'll play knight d5 because it comes with a few threats. It blunders the e-pawn, but I think we can manage. We'll just defend with bishop e2. And then remember, this is... Uh, that's check and mate at the moment. Not to mention, knight f6 threatens to win the queen, so... Yeah, 
decides to take, but at the cost of our one pawn, we kind of free our queen, and we have this position in front of us where we can just kind of castle safely and and continue on. So I I kind of like what, what just happened. Rookie one next. We're up the exchange. Black is probably going to play d6 and try to get something going. Knight e5. Yeah, there's not going to be many moves better than bringing a rook to the the open file, like rook lined up against the king. Um, bishop f3 looks like it kind of wins here. Can't be taken. Queen g5, there is f6. Um, but yeah, I think we just take. Bishop is technically also threatened here. I think this is going well for us. Pretty sure bishop h6 was a good move there. Black played too quickly in the opening, but honestly fell for an opening trap. Like, knight c6 and bishop c5, you... Technically can't play. Let's take this one now. There's one check, but that's it. And remember, this is a pin, so the knight can never move. So it's just the queen against my position. And with two rooks here, I'll never get back rank mated. So I'm free to kind of do whatever here. G. Uh, just a bit of an opening trap there, guys. I mean, it's not much of a trap. You just, you can't do this. Against the two knights, you can't play bishop c5 like this. White plays knight e5, and whether you play bishop f2, it doesn't really help. White gets a huge center here. Very nice, uh, very nice play. Also, um, knight e5, and we saw what happened here. Knight c6, which was played, just blunders everything. Queen f6, and bishop uh, h6 is pretty, pretty nice here. Doesn't really have a good way to recapture, or to take the bishop on h6 at all. Yeah, and then every piece starts falling. All right, we need, it uh, looks like a couple games here. Let's go for e4. Oh, okay, <laughs> d6. Well, I think it's safe to say uh, this isn't really an opening we've studied. I'm gonna make sure to play e5 before black plays e5. Just because it looks uh, the most annoying for him castling. Always good to overprotect that pawn. This pawn, like defending this pawn, is going to make the position. Let's take this way with the pawn so we cover f6. I want to maintain some threats there. Okay, it really looks like this pawn is going to move forward here. Looks all but assured. Can we go here? Takes, takes. I think we can do this. Takes, takes. I was thinking h6, knight, h7. So g6, but that's, that's kind of what we want to see. This is the only move that's like remotely annoying. Otherwise, I feel pretty good here.
here, there's night there. I think we go with this regardless. It's kind of weird, but... Oh no, there's knight there, knight there. Knight there yeah, I think it's weird. We're giving this bishop up, but the dark squares are so weak that I think it might be not that necessary to continue here. Let's go back. So yeah, I think this position is going to be all about the dark squares, so I don't think we actually need this bishop anymore. You know, queen e3, queen there, knight g5. Queen h6. We'll start with b4. Knight e4 feels good. And we might see bishop b7. Rook d1, c5 takes. Basically, it comes down to whether or not my opponent plays the move f5, because I think not including the move f5 eventually is going to result in a loss one way or another. So it's not a great looking move, but I really do believe that that it's correct. So well played. Well played to my opponent there. I think that was a necessary move. Okay, this one's hanging as well. I guess we could take it, but I might hold off here. Gotta watch out for mate, but that's about it. All right, we can go here. What do we have? Two extra pawns. Not bad. Should be enough because. We can make one outside pass pawn. We do have an escape square. I'd like to get my rook behind the pawn. I'm not sure how effective we're going to be at that. Mm. It wasn't a very good move, and I was super helpful there. Good game to Baker Gang. Well played, well played. What happened here? He made some really good defensive decisions. I know the position looked kind of bad, but I thought F5 was very smart. Things could only have gone wrong, I think, if you didn't play F5. So, very smart move. But not much to say about the opening. I thought we were getting a French, but the guy didn't play d5, and I don't think it was a mouse slip. It looks like he just was like playing some quick free move system, so. But very key to play the move e5, by the way. If black plays e5 here, the game is much harder to break through, and in fact, very normal. So white playing e5, I think, is key. This is a pretty big deal here. Thanks to Gay for a month, 100 bits and 11 month reset. He's back, my biggest fan. Thank you to GFA. Hey, Perkin. Yenner Chess also with 10 subs. We're not losing on time, Yenner, not there. Thank you very much. 10 subs for Argent's victory. We have Title Tuesday coming up. I got one more game for 1500 here. And then I'll probably switch over to kick, hang out a bit before Title Tuesday, and we have our viewer tournament coming up afterwards.
But we need one more game. One more win. E4. We got uh, our Karakon opening here. Wow, I haven't seen this move before. All right. I think I'm going to take. A very interesting move, e5. Never thought of it before. Now black has a few ways, you know, you could play queen d5 or queen d4. Probably what I'm going to do though is I'm going to play queen e2. So guard the knight and then queen takes here is playable, but I think we can dislodge the queen. Because remember, if the queen ever moves away, then there's going to be a nasty discovered check. So it looks, looks kind of tough to take that. And instead we get this, which we're happy with, because now we just retreat the knight, and we should keep this pawn. Also, I can go knight d6 here. I don't know if that's... Nah, it looks like a bit too overextended. I'll lose that pawn eventually. I think let's just move this knight. Bishop takes c2, just d3 wins the bishop, so we don't really have to worry about that. This does win the bishop here, but afterwards I have this pawn that's just always, always at risk of being taken. I still think that's the right way to play, though. Can't take there because I'll win a piece. So this move is forced, and then we'll take, and I think we'll play d4 to hang on to things and try to castle long because it's a little difficult to castle short. Although I'm realizing g4 comes with tempo and then bishop g2, so maybe it's actually quite possible to castle short. If here, I guess there is queen takes c2. I mean, I'm not that bothered by this. I am actually going to play this very odd-looking move. I kind of like it. It gets my bishop out super quick and gets me castled. Definitely a weird idea, but making it work here. Castle. Queen e6, I think I'll play bishop f5. It's a very strange game here, but bishop f5 forces the capture. And then the queen has to retreat somewhere. I'm just trying to go on the on the attack here. And queen g4, bishop h6, stuff like that. Because the queen doesn't have any other squares here. Bishop h6, I think. I think this is a pretty tough position for the opponent. f6, I think we're pretty happy with that. Also this, I guess queen e7. Well, let's just go with this. Protected pass pawn. c3. Also, the knight's never fully safe on d5, because we can just go c4. King h1 and rook g1 to put some pressure there. Okay, let's move the king.
can actually take and go rook g1 now. And queen e7, bishop h6. I'm not sure there's any way to keep defending this. Mm -hmm. Queen takes, of course, is a good move, but bishop takes looks better. <laughs> looks better. Yeah, this is actually going to be a mate, I think, kind of regardless. I mean, I guess you can sack the queen, so maybe the best one to do is actually this one. Because now, if king takes or moves, we have queen g8, and if the queen blocks, then I want to rook, and I'll come back and take the rest of the material. Good game! All right, we had to beat a 1500 to be a 1500. That's the way it should be. Very nice, very nice. Nice KO in there at the end. Yeah, I like this line against the Karakhan. To be honest, I've never seen e5. Had me thinking for a sec, maybe are there some tricks, queen d5, queen d4, queen h4, but there really aren't. Queen h4, we have knight f2, which is the square where we're always going to put our knight. So it's not that hard to spot, because this opening is based on knight f2. And then this, queen e2, and if he takes, the problem is, knight f3 happens, where does the queen go? Like, queen e7, I have knight d6, and queen d6, I'll go here. Queen e5, you're starting to see the problem. Eventually, I'll kick this queen off the e file, or it'll go to e7, and again, I'll have knight d6 check, and everything will fall apart here. So, yeah, that was a pretty good opening. Short castles for black. What did I think of the move short castle? I mean... I guess not great, just because what I did was so forcing. And it forces like knight takes, pawn takes, queen g4. Uh, so maybe not great. Long castle instead? Yeah, I mean, long castle is probably a better move. But long castle also comes with, uh, I guess, some other issues like. You know, I might move my knight, c3, bishop f4. The king is going to be pretty uncomfortable there. I, I don't feel that unsafe, if that's what you mean. h5 is pretty much the best that you can throw at me, and I, maybe I could just play g5. So I don't feel like my king's very unsafe. These knights don't have any squares to go to. They're, they're all pretty bad. So, yeah, I feel pretty confident in the position. Long castle's better than short castle, though. I'll give you that. Is this a rerun? You got it. We always rerun here. No original streams, only reruns. For example, Yanner Chess already gifted 10 subs. This must be a rerun. 10 more subs from Yanner Chess. Rerun subs. Thank you very much for 10 gifted. We had a nice, uh, nice session there. Elas, Tony, thanks for the 23 months. We'll see you next month with a brand new sub badge. We'll get it nice and shiny for you. Two years coming up. Thanks, Elas, Tony. Ravishing. I do not. Still uh, keep in close contact with my boxing trainer, though. UTT later. Yes, Penguin Seducer. 7.30 p.m. Eastern, right after uh, Title Tuesday. Hope you'll join us. Is this series going to be on YouTube? Yes, it will be. Yes, go Coach Brando. Go Coach. What the heck are you talking about, Gory? No, I haven't seen your battle. You're always battling. 
Most interesting man in the world. I promise you that. Thanks, Ravishin, for the bits. They raided your turtle tank? Was it outdoors? 32 months, AB Shakespeare, and a tier 3. Thanks, AB. Welcome back, Sir Tier 3. I may have to do a prisoner exchange for Ted. Offer up KNVB in his place. No one should suffer at the hands of the Leafs except KNVB. AB and Real T to blame. They conspired against him. Or in another battle. It's very funny. Very funny. Always. Flashlight in a golf club. Jeez, Corey. <laughs> How the hell do you do it? Never forget VBK and my best chess teacher. Well, shout out to all the habits, bros. Ravishim. Thanks for the bits again. All right, I think we'll head to kick, but not before we discuss Gory's battle here, the Quadros resub, and our sponsor of today's stream, Holtzkern. Yes, it's coming up. A Kuklon. If you don't have a kick account, you can make one now. 45 months, thanks, the Quadro. You do have one? Well, we'll see you there then. I'm going to tell you about Holtzkern first. We've been working with Holtzkern for a number of months now. It's really been quite a while. We have a lot of Holtzkern product here. I was joking around with my disrespect glasses. Holtzkern speedrun incoming, you know? Let me just uh, shot these ones on here real quick. Let me just put these ones on here. Yes, Holtzgren speedrun. You got your disrespect speedrun? I got my Holtzgren speedrun. I look like Maverick. Just a cool cat. Feeling like a boss. Go Ralph and go Mavs, but not too much. Yeah, not bad, eh, Bam DZ? I have a couple uh, sunglasses that that we got from Holtzgern. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Look, like if you look closely, you can see the reflection of yourselves in the glasses. Say hi to yourselves. Um, they come in these nice cork... Uh, wood boxes with nice presentation looking pretty nice this is the other uh, these are the other sunglasses by the way i mean these are like the boss aviators styles but then we got the you know i play the banjo and i work with acrylic depends what look you're going for We do have a lot of products in the whole screen store for women. Absolutely. And you know what? Who's the number one woman you should be thinking of right now? I'm here to remind everybody. Yes, guys. Yes. Guess what? Mother's Day. Yes. Your moms. Mother's Day is upcoming. Don't forget about that day. Don't forget about her. And maybe a nice little Holtzgren gift. Could be a very thoughtful uh, thing to do. 
Yeah, I feel like Tommy said that before, DP Leo. It's nice to see everyone's very considerate in that way. Mother's Day coming up, though, in all seriousness, May 12th. All right, that's on the Sunday. We have a code and link you can use. So if you do exclamation mark hold skirn, you'll see it pop up in the chat there. Use that link or just use the code CHESSBRA. It'll give you 15% off. They also do shipping worldwide. It's free as well. And in Poland, you have Mother's Day on the 26th of May. Well, perfect. You got lots of time to find a gift then. So, old screen. They got uh, pretty nice gift boxes. I mean, these are just the boxes they normally come in, but I think they make great gifts. This is, for example, one of the bandlets. It comes in this nice little, literally, wooden box. Just a nice presentation. Hey there, Moistad. Don't forget about Mother's Day there, buddy. I'm just in my uh, creative era here. Rocking the, uh, you know, Johnny Depp's going for the spheres. But someone was asking, products for women, don't worry, we got you covered. There's lots of products here. Jewelry, necklace, earrings. It'd be really nice to browse through. And there's so many options too. So even if you find like, you know, you go through and you're like, okay, maybe I'm not feeling these initial designs. There's so many to, to scroll through different colors, eight different pages here. You will find something you like or that someone else likes. So whether it's a gift for yourself, someone else, code CHESPRA. We got you covered with a nice discount. A lot of people in chat already have some hold screen products. We got lots of products that I just try to show off different ones. See if I can give you an idea, maybe inspire you, which ones might interest you. For me in the, the men category, I probably lean towards the bandlets and yeah, maybe bandlets. Eric's been rocking the necklace the most, but bandlet and bracelet, for me, those are the ones. But Eric's been rocking the whole screw necklace like nonstop. I think he has it on right now in his trip to Cayman. Cool cat, adder. That's what I'm saying. That's how I feel right now. So just another reminder that Mother's Day is coming up and you can use our code. I'll show you how to use it. I always do this, but uh, I want to let you know. So there's no ambiguity. Most important thing at the end of the day is like, how the hell do I use this discount? So I got you covered. Let me just take the cam right off the screen. I know it'll, it'll be a pain not to be able to look at my beautiful shades here, but just give me 20 seconds. So you have your, your cart there on the right. At the bottom, you just click view and edit shopping cart it takes you here. You can see we've already got the discount applied. I just have a couple items in here just to show you guys. Code is chest brought, but I'll even cancel it here and I'll add it again just to let everyone know uh, exactly what to do. So yours will probably look like this. Discount code, promo code, there's a box right here. Just go in and type chest bra. Apply and that'll get added to, uh, to your order total. And they do worldwide shipping, so don't worry about that. Yeah, chest bra discount. And yes, the store is based in Austria, the company rather, and of course, they have some on-the-ground stores. So if you happen to be in Austria, maybe you'll see a live hold screen store, which I think is pretty cool. But of course, apart from their store, they also do the online store and uh, worldwide shipping. So grab yourself or maybe think of your beautiful mother on the upcoming Mother's Day. Hold screen makes a great gift and you get a nice 15% discount using our link in the chat, exclamation mark hold screen or our code. It's just chess bra, easy to remember. But have a look, browse around on the site, see if anything interests you. I think there's quite a few options for, for women. There's actually more options for women than, than men and more categories. So if you're looking for stuff for uh, yourself, someone special, Mother's Day, then I think it makes a great gift. You can even just browse the section gifts for her to, you know, get the creative juices flowing if you don't really know what to get. 
So like I said, guys, Title Tuesday is happening today. We're having our viewer tournament later. Wanted to make sure to shout out Holtzgren, who we've been working with and been partnered with for so long now. Been sponsoring the channel for a while, and uh, it's been a pleasure to work with them. So every time you guys make an order or a purchase and use our, our code or link, it really helps out. So if you're interested in some of their products, we wear them all the time here. And we've shown off of quite a few of them so far. So if you want to grab one for yourself, we'd really appreciate it. And we got a nice discount code for you. I'm heading over to our Kick channel. All right? Kick.com slash chessbra. That's where we're going right now. Title Tuesday, the late title Tuesday is soon. I'll be playing. My rating is exactly 2800, so we'll see if I can maintain it. Kick.com slash chess bra. And hopefully everyone here is interested in playing some chess themselves afterwards. We're going to be hosting a viewer tournament starting at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. It's going to be the same Title Tuesday format, except for you guys to play. Akashi Rawi, thanks for the 21 months. Exclamation mark kick. I'll see you guys there. Just going to end the stream and start it up in 30 seconds on kick and in 30 minutes, title Tuesday. That's the plan. All right. Take care, everyone. Thanks for watching. And most importantly, shout out to Holtzkern, exclamation mark Holtzkern for sponsoring the channel. I'll see you guys.